So have you ever wondered what it truly means to be debt-free and why so many people misunderstand the journey or why it's so hard to resist certain temptations even when they sabotage our financial goals? Now, in this episode, we're going to unravel the biggest financial mistakes and the most triumphant wins that we've had, revealing the highs and lows of our own financial journeys. We're going to be diving into the most impactful advice for those just starting out and explore some of our favorite resources that can help you transform your financial life. Stay tuned. Hey guys, I'm Brad Nelson, founder of Debt Free Dad. I paid off about $45,000 in debt. I've been debt free now for more than 11 years. I've also helped thousands of other people save and pay off tens of millions of dollars with the work that we do here at Debt Free Dad. And I'm Amber Taylor, and we saved and paid off $54,000 in just 20 months. And we've been debt free now since May of 2018. Hey, my name is Ryan Nelson. My wife and I paid off about $160,000 over eight years while raising three kids. Now, after listening to this episode, you guys, if you want to take your finances a step further and you'd like to get better results with your finances in as little as 30 to 60 days, we'll be sharing some information about that coming up on today's show. So Amber, six years uh, this month, isn't it? Was it like May uh, or June? Yeah, I guess. It was like a May or a June, right? It was May. It was May, yeah. Yeah, so. that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So, guys, if you're listening to this, this is our 250th episode. Um, and Chris and Katie are not joining us tonight. And Amber and Ryan and I originally started this podcast. Guys, it's crazy to think about this, but in it's like right around Christmas time of 2019. I don't even know where the time goes, honestly. Yes. <laughs> and, and how we've done 250 okay. episodes. What do you guys think about that? That's because we were just having so much fun. We were... Just you know, got out of the gate. We were excited to go. <laughs> no, don't go back to the first one. I think it was bad. <laughs> yeah, people. I mean, people sometimes will be like, you know, man, like, how, did you guys have like a lot of experience? And I'm like, no. I remember having a conversation with my brother and be like, I'm thinking about doing a podcast. We're like, eh, let's try it. <laughs> and here we are, almost five years later. <laughs> yeah, and I gotta tell you, it's it's not always easy. It's a little bit of a grind at times, but uh, it's definitely been a lot of fun to do and and see the audience grow and uh, see where this podcast has gone. So. It's been fun. So yeah, celebrating 250 episodes today. And so guys, I thought it would be kind of cool just to a little bit reminisce about our own financial journeys and getting out of debt and uh, really kind of just getting our viewpoints on certain questions that I'm going to kind of rattle off here in today's episode. And uh, we're going to have a little bit of fun. So uh, if you are new to the Debt Free Dad podcast or new to your financial journey, I think this episode is going to be really good for you because uh, between the three of us, we have uh, gone through a lot of our own financial challenges and getting out of debt, and we've also been debt-free for many years. And uh, I think we can, between the three of us, share some really great advice on just our own experiences and hopefully helping you, who might be a normal income earner just like all of us were, uh, reaching your financial goals. So, guys, the first question I have for you today on today's episode is, what do you feel people misunderstand the most when it comes to being debt-free? I think that they um, feel like they'll just miss out on everything. Like, because if you have to pay off debt and you have to do the things that you, you know, you can't do anything else. You're cheapskate. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I might, I might be. <laughs> well, and I, rem I, but I, I mean, I seriously, I remember, I mean, I agree with you, Amber. I think that people, um, there were sacrifices we made to get out of debt. And I think those, some of those sacrifices were kind of shocking to some people. And it was like, ew, you know, kind of like this. <laughs> I, I don't want to do that if you got to be debt free, you know, kind of thing. Um, but those weren't sacrifices forever. They were just sacrifices mm -hmm. in the short terms. But I do think there's this idea that, yeah, you, it's boring. You're never going to have any fun. And when you die, you're going to have a bunch of money and you'll never do anything. Like that's, and to me, it's <laughs> like, that's nothing. That's so much further from the truth than, you know. During it, during the process, I will sometimes agree with that because it's not fun <laughs> during the process. But when it's over, it's totally different. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I think, um, and those are those are really good ones, and I would I would totally agree. I think there's I think there's multiple answers that are top on the list here, but I think another one for me is it's and it, and maybe not so much because I used to be this person, but it's it's amazing how many people who make normal incomes don't actually believe that you could ever be debt free that you could actually pay off all of your debt, maybe besides your mortgage. Let's leave your mortgage and your rent alone. 
But let's say live without credit cards and car payments and student loans and personal loans and financing that that people can actually do this making normal incomes. I mean, you guys see it when we make our content on social media and TikTok and and you know YouTube Shorts and Facebook Reels and all that stuff. I mean, we get comments on a regular basis of people who are like, "Normal people can't do that. Like, I could barely afford my bills. Like, how how would I ever live debt free? Like, that's impossible." And I think um, now, now are there some people who couldn't do it based on their circumstances? Yes, I, I don't. Yeah, there, there's clearly a difference between people who are living very poor, but people who also are making middle incomes and and making a decent income, they're just not really taking care of their money. And I think a lot more of those people could actually reach debt freedom, but they are stuck by doubt and just what they've always done. Yeah, I think people make an assumption that they don't make enough money. Um, there was just a, I forget, my I had my wife send it to me. It was just an article about Antonio Brown, the football star made $81 million during his NFL career has nothing. Yeah. And it's like, and I think wow. it's, it's and for me and even, and I, I never made anywhere close to that, but I think for all of us, it's like, if you can't manage the little money amount to make, I don't care how much money you make. If it's a little amount and you can't manage it properly, if you make $81 million and you don't know how to manage $50,000, you're not going to be able to manage 81 million either. And I think, and, and he's not the only one. Mm -hmm. I'm not calling him out by any means. There's plenty of people who've made millions and millions are in the same boat. Um, so it's not, I think, kind of like what you said, Brad, it's this, this misunderstanding of I don't make enough money. When I make X amount, then I'll be ready to get out of debt. Then I can do it. And I was yeah. that person. But every time I got a raise, I just upped my lifestyle and I never really got out of debt. Yeah. There was this crazy statistic a while back. I don't know if it's still accurate nowadays, but it was like somewhere of like 70 to 80% of all pro, I want to say it was football. It might have been basketball, but I think it was football. All pro football players were were broke within three years of leaving the league. Yep. And, you know, they the NFL started to like put all this, you know, stuff together to try to help these people learn how to manage their money because they realized like this was a real issue and challenge that they were having. These people are just blowing all their cash. But you're absolutely right. And, um, you know, we, we see that all the time. People who make higher incomes doesn't necessarily mean that they – are, are much better. They might have nicer things. They might have shinier objects that they're, that they own. But if you look at their true financial picture, they're no different than say someone who's making 40, 50, $60,000 a year. Cause we typically see higher incomes mean just higher spending. And uh, we've all fallen for mm -hmm. that in our lives too. So we're not mm -hmm. innocent to that. Yep. So next question is what do you guys have the hardest time saying no to? And, and I, and for me, this changes. Like over the years that I've been debt free, you know, as my life has changed, it's it it morphs into other things because, you know, you have kids or younger kids, older kids, you know, as your life changes, I think the things that you have a hard time saying no to also changes too. So mine definitely has changed a little bit. Food. Yeah, <laughs> that's mine right now. A hundred percent. I mean, I um, my wife, we just had this conversation because, um, you know, all of our kids are older now and. I used to cook. I used to cook a ton and I cook for a family. Right. And so you would cook, you'd have leftovers. And I, I personally don't, I don't like leftovers. Um, it's just my thing. I can't help it. There's certain things I will, like I'll take a cold piece of pizza There's certain things I will eat, but I'm not someone that cooks like a huge meal saves like half of it. And will eat that for the next two days. My wife will do it, but I just, I'm just not that way. So, um, I'm just giving you all the excuses I find to go out to eat right now, <laughs> <laughs> but a hundred percent. Like I, I think as, as, because I don't really enjoy it. Cause I, I feel like by the time I go to the store, I buy all the stuff and I cook a meal for two people. And then I have all this stuff left that we don't maybe necessarily eat. I'm like, I just rather go get something, but that adds up really fast. Right. Um, and we just kind of had a reality check this past month of like, you know, we like to go to Starbucks or certain things we like to do. And sometimes it's just like, that's, eh, eight bucks. That's eh, 10 bucks. That's eh, 15 bucks. And by the end of the month, you're like, Holy crap. <laughs> uh, we can't keep doing this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mine's definitely food too right now. I think, I think it, I think it is honestly probably for a lot of people. I think, <laughs> I think food is the hard part. Like right now I got one, you know, I got one five-year-old and I got a 14 year old and 14 year olds in soccer. And you know, I got a five-year-old and you know, she's busy with her therapies and all that other stuff. And when you're a single parent, it's like, you only have so much time to prep and prepare and do all of that stuff. So I would say over the, the list past six months to a year, food is definitely been an area that I probably really need to address, but you know, admittedly you get lazy with it, you know, and you just kind of 
yeah, we'll we'll figure it out when this happens, right? <laughs> yep. So yeah, it's something that you have to definitely put your foot down sometimes. I feel the food thing, but for me, the hardest thing, at least at this time, is my granddaughter. Oh like, yeah. You know, we we help out, we put her into sports and do the things. And when she asks to go to McDonald's, we often just say, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so yeah it would be her for sure that's awesome (laughs) all right what do you guys feel has been your biggest financial mistake and it could be anything you're when you're in debt when you're out of debt when whatever like what do you feel your biggest financial mistake was my biggest mistake was dealing with the math side of being in debt and not dealing with the behavioral behavioral side of like myself. So for years we consolidated and consolidated and consolidated and did, you know, we consolidated on credit cards. We consolidated union home equity loans. We consolidated, uh, we took, I took money out of a 401k at one point. We just, we did so many things addressing the math part like if we do this consolidation or we do this then we're only going to have one payment and then we promise we're going to pay it off and we just did that over and over and over again and it always bought us a little bit more time to keep living our life irresponsibly you know because we had a lower payment so now it freed up the other money so we could keep doing the things to pretend like we everything's fine um and that just kept digging us deeper and deeper until like i said we've paid off you know, between our vehicles and all the things we had, like $160,000 in debt, you know, they reached that point in the road where it was like, there, we couldn't do it anymore. The banks were like, ah, we can't do this anymore. Like, you don't, your debt to income ratio now is like crazy. We can't loan you any more money. And so it was like, we have to figure this out. But that, that was my biggest thing. It's really, I wish I would have just been more honest with myself on the front end because it's, it just sabotaged us. Um, I mean, not investing early that's oh that one hurts <laughs> but I, can't, I can't go back and do that so that hurts um but now that we are we're you know regularly doing it which is awesome um but honestly getting that first credit card in college that's where never should have done it i actually just i was in my uh bank account recently and literally you guys i looked at the date i got this credit card or oh, i was in my <laughs> i was looking at my credit score stuff I got this credit card the month I started school. Like literally they were on campus and that's when I got it. Year, date, month, right when I started school. Yeah. I thought I'll be good with it. It'll be fine. Emergencies. Yeah. Oh, I can relate. I remember I opened, it wasn't my first credit card. It was one of the first credit cards I opened. It was through Sears and Sears isn't even around anymore. When they mm-hmm. sold the little, um, I was in school for graphic design and I had to have a Mac. And they sold those blueberry, like, remember the colored Macs that they yeah. had? There was like, yeah. there was blue and strawberry and lime and all. Well, I needed to have the blue one. <laughs> I put it on a credit card. That thing took me years to pay off. It was stupid. <laughs> yeah, those credit cards. But yeah, I would agree with you, Amber. I think the biggest financial mistake that I made was not starting early with investing. I mean, there's a lot of things. I think I could probably, we could do a whole show on just mistakes. <laughs> but I would think for me, it's it's not understanding the power of compound interest and how time is really your best asset when it comes to investing. And the sooner you start, the so- the better off you're going to be. And it could be just a little amount. And that's why people, you know, p- people's biggest misunderstanding with investing, if you're listening to this, is like, well, I can only put in 50 to 100 bucks. It's not worth it. It is. It is worth it. Put it in there. Um, and mm-hmm. but when you're younger, you kind of just fool yourself. Ah, I'll get to that eventually when I'm, I'm still young and you know, you, you, you tell yourself or you sell yourself that you have all this time and you just don't. And, uh, that's one thing I'm definitely hammering in on my kids with. And I've already started for them is investing just a small amount every single month for them. So they can see how much that builds as they were kids. And hopefully they take that over and they keep it going and roll it over into their retirement accounts uh, when they become adults. So, but yeah, that's probably the biggest one for me for sure. All right, let me hold on. Let me scroll here. All right. We might all have the same answer for this one. But what has been, in your opinion, your biggest financial win? Learning how to say no. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, that has changed a lot of things when it comes to our finances. It's just 
knowing when to say no. It's a good one. The financial win that we had was kind of like one of our big whys for getting out of debt. And my oldest son, all my kids actually are on track. And my oldest graduated 100% debt free with a college degree, uh, bought a car, 100% paid for. Um, and he moved out this year. Um, he's saving for retirement. He's got money in a Roth IRA already, decent amount. Um, he's able to put money in. I mean, money, he pays, puts that in, does all his living. That, I'm proud of him, but that's a direct result of what we did. Like, had we not done all the stuff mm -hmm. we did, our, one of our big whys was we didn't want our kids to not have the same education as we did. It wasn't, we didn't want them to go out into the world and think you have to have a credit card and think all these things that people think. Um, and I mean, I feel like we're kind of living proof that if you teach your kids about it now, may, will they maybe go and do wrong things when they get older? Sure. That's on totally on them. But I know that we set them up with the right mindset and the right ability to get them on the right foot and do the right things. And that to me is like, that was one of the biggest reasons why we wanted to get out of debt. Yeah, I think, I mean, easy answer. I mean, right off the top is, I mean, I made it to debt freedom, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's a great win, but I think it's the things that you learn on that journey that are more valuable than the actual debt freedom part. Like for me, I am like so much more patient nowadays than I used to be when it came to things. Like I don't, I have lost out on this whole, I need to have everything right now, you know, and most of that stuff mm -hmm. that you feel like you need to have right now, you don't actually even ever need it. And those feelings pass and you don't buy a lot of the stuff that you used to buy. But I would say I think that's probably the biggest financial win that I've had over the years is, is just learning how to be patient, learning how to use your budget, learning how to save. Like you said, Amber, learning to tell yourself no and, you know, uh, live below your means. And I think um, that whole mindset has just paid off immensely and just preparing for how life comes at you, you know, and, and the good times and the bad and, and being able to, um, you know, weather a lot of the storms that come. And it's just a lot about just practicing, you know, patience and, um, and, and just being a lot more intentional. So I think that for me is probably the, the biggest win that I have. Now, when my kids get older, right, I'll probably be right there with you. I hope. <laughs> I'm really hoping my kids are going to be like, my dad's this debt free guy, but I have a lot of debt. He don't know about it. <laughs> hey, we, we, and I've told them all, you know, my, my middle, my, our daughter, our middle one, she loves to spend money. And my, you know, I always joke, like I, you know, all you can do is teach them what you can teach them. And then you set them out into the world and that's right. You live your life. Yep. Good you know, luck. Figure it, figure it out. I mean, it's just, you do whatever you want. You can, you can live like I did. It's, yep. it's fun while it lasts. Trust me. I had a lot of fun, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it catches up to you real quick. Yes, it does. What is uh, your favorite part of living debt free? The choices that I get to make now, definitely having more choices because I can decide to take more vacations if I want to, because I can put my money where I want it to go. Yeah. I thought, one. I thought in this is, this is, this might be the same for all of us, but I, I thought that when I got out of debt, the, my favorite part would be like, I have money to buy all kinds of stuff. And now that I'm yeah. out of debt, don't get me wrong. There's, we'd still buy some things, but, um, I don't, I don't have that consumption mindset anymore. And so mine is right along with mm -hmm. you, Amber. It's just, ability to choose and ability to not feel this weight of the world on your shoulders. Like, you know, just to know that if no matter pretty much what happens, we'll, we'd figure it out. Like, you know, I'm not mm -hmm. my old life when I was working my nine to five and had all these bills and payments. It was like, if something happened and I don't have this job, I don't know what we're going to do and things are going to get tight tomorrow. And we're going to be like SOL real fast. And to just not have that hanging over your head, doesn't mean that things won't hurt or you wouldn't have to figure it out, but there wouldn't be this huge emergency. It wouldn't be just this huge stress and it would be more choice. It would be like, well, what do I want to do? You know, not like I got to go work in this crappy and career that I hate to pay for my bills. It would be like, I can do what I kind of whatever I want almost. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of feel, um, kind of the same way. I, I would say number one is obviously a hell of a lot less stress. You know, that's pretty amazing. You know, <laughs> being able to sleep at night, not having to worry how you're going to make your car payments and things like that. Um, I think the other big one for me is time. You know, I, I, you, you give yourself the option and choice of how do you spend more of your time? 
because you're not so dependent on your income to pay all these bills. It gives you the freedom and flexibility to, you know, focus on more of the things that you want to do. I mean, you guys know, like right now I'm in the middle of selling my house and big, making big life changes right now. And I've had to take a lot of time back and off because I've got two kids I'm taking care of. And, um, but I also have you two on the team, which is really helpful. <laughs> so it's not just me, but, but it's been nice to, you know, it's, it's in those moments where it's like, I'm, I'm glad I did the work and, that's where it really pays off is when, you know, life gets stressful everywhere else, but it doesn't have to add on more stress when it comes to the money side. And, uh, for me, that's been, that's been huge. And that's, that's a really great feeling when you go through something like this and, and money isn't a source of stress. It's just all the other stuff that you have to manage. And, and that's, that's a pretty cool place to be. Yep. All right. Um, oh, I scrolled up. All right. If there was one piece of advice that you'd give someone who is just getting started, what do you feel would be your best advice to them? I would say that if, like, once they figure out their budget and do that kind of thing and they, they see where their money's going and stuff, if they have it in their budget, a little leeway to have a little bit of fun, add the fun. Don't cut everything out. Add a little bit of fun into your budget as long as you can still pay a little extra on the debt. Um, it's important to still have some fun because if you cut it all out, you're just going to burn yourself out and you're going to probably give up. 100% true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that for sure. I mean, that that was... I can't tell you how many times we were like, we're going to really stick to this budget and we're going to be out of debt in 18 yep. months. And then it was like month three. It's like, you know, forget it. We're going to go to the to the store and just buy a bunch of stuff because I'm bored. You know, Because it's just like, so it, it's kind of like re, being, my, being myself on a restricted diet. Like I'm never eating pizza again. And then it's like, I'll take two larges and right. we're going to have a binge night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I For me, it, I think I would look at it as um, it, don't focus on how long this is going to take you. Because I think on the yeah. front end, it took us it, it took us eight years once we budgeted fun and we did, you know, it took us a long time. And people might look at that and go, oh, my gosh, eight years. Like, I do not want to do this for eight years. But the reality is, is that eight years is going to pass no matter what. Eight, you could mm -hmm. either be eight years from now, be out of debt, or you could be eight years from now and be even worse shape than you're in right now. Um, yeah. and I think that, that, that you just have to have that perspective going in. Like you did not get into the situation or the majority of people did not get into this situation overnight. You didn't suddenly wake up and we're like, I'm in really a lot of debt. It probably took you years to get to the point where you're like, holy crap, I got to get out of this. Um, and it's going to take you some time to, to get out of it. And so just don't focus on three years, four years, five years, you know, cause yeah. it, that's just going to spin you out if you think of it that way. Right. It's like that saying, what do they say? It's, uh, it's hard to get out of debt, but it's harder also being broke the rest of your life too. Yes. So, you know, choose yeah. the hard that you want yes. and, um, it'll pay off. There's no question. But yeah, I think for me, the best advice that I would give is just, is just get started. I think that's the thing is, is like we just talked about with compound interest and investing and time and like time is the one thing that you just don't get back. And the longer you delay, uh, the worse things are going to get. It ain't going to fix itself. It ain't going to get better. And the more you stick your head in the sand and ignore it, the more it's going to keep piling up and stressing you out and making your life worse. And I see so many people who are just stuck on the fence. They know they need to do something, but they just don't ever get started. And I think um, if I were you and you were listening to this and you're on this journey, it's just, just keep focused on taking the action. And, uh, even when you don't feel like you're getting the big wins, you just have to keep on going. And that kind of leads me to my, uh, next question here, because, uh, a big reason why I feel that way is because, uh, again, I'm going to ask you guys this, but what's one book podcast or workshop or self-development thing that you guys have done that's had the biggest impact on you. And I'm, I'm going to answer this cause it kind of goes with this, this last question. But for me is, uh, Darren Hardy in his book called the compound effect. And it talks all about just, and it, it applies to every area of your life. And if you have not read this book, I highly recommend check it out. It's a very short read. You can read it in an afternoon, but it, it is, 
so good for every area of your life because he talks about it's just taking these small, tiny steps every single day. A lot of us, like what we like to do is just we like to rip everything apart, make all these big, huge steps all at once. And that's exhausting because making change is physically and mentally exhausting. So what he recommends is just start making small little incremental changes every single day and just keep at it. Be consistent, be disciplined in doing those things, and then continue to keep adding to them day after day. And before you know it, you look back and you're debt free. And that's kind of how it works. You know, it's, it's really, really cool. So just focus on getting started, focus on the small wins. Two books for me that I loved. One of the first ones I read was called stop acting rich. Um, and that, that's where it just started really opening my mind up a little bit more of like the psychology a little bit behind, you know, why we spend money, how we spend money. One of the chapters in there really talked about, cause this was us. We had a, you know, a nice house and a really nice subdivision. And he kind of talked a lot about how like you can kind of move into these subdivisions and you subliminally spend more money because you're surrounded by people who spend money. And it really just started to be like, man, I just started like, it's just kind of hit me. Like and this was what I said earlier where I wasn't really dealing with me. I was dealing with the math side of it, but it really started to hit us of like, this is what we've been doing all these years is we, not realizing it, you know, not realizing that we've been sabotaging ourselves. So that was a big one for me. Stop acting rich. And then the other big one for me that I still love is uh, the psychology of money by Morgan Housel. Yeah. Um, just, just a great book to, again, I think a lot of our money problems are psychology related, behavior related. It's not a lot about, I don't make enough money. It's all about how we've learned about money, what we've been trained to learn about money, how we're fed it by marketing and if you can break out of that, you're going to see getting out of debt and money in a whole new way that you don't see it now. Yeah. See, when, when we were doing this, I literally consumed all things Brad and Roots. <laughs> <laughs> so this podcast is what definitely what I recommend. But no, recently I started, I've started listening to uh, Ramit Sadie and his podcast is really good. And I like it because you really see all spectrums of like people where they're at some people making a lot of money, some people making, you know, middle average money, but everybody is in the same darn boat. Like it's just eye opening to see. So it just kind of, it motivates me to just keep on going and keep stay. Cause sometimes I just want to go get a new car, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I do like, we just painted all the rust on our car. I'm like, we're just going to make this last a couple more years, but I really want to go and buy a new car. So I've got to start planning because <laughs> I don't want to go and take on debt. I just don't. Uh, um, but it keeps me grounded. So yeah, that's a cool podcast. I like it. All right, guys. Last fun question. We're going to do this real quick. Nothing financially related, but if you were trapped on an island and you could only bring three things with you, what three things would they be? And now note, there is plenty of food and water on the island, so you don't have to bring those to survive. You would have plenty of food and water to survive. Who wants to go first? They have to be things? or It like could be whatever be... you want. I, now, I'm, I'll tell you what mine are. I, I would need to bring my Blackstone to cook. <laughs> <laughs> I would bring plenty of vodka <laughs> if I'm on an island by myself. <laughs> <laughs> and what else would I bring? I'd pr probably some sort of entertainment, music, movies, probably something along those lines. Yeah, I was going to say like a solar powered generator. <laughs> Unlimited power. And then I need <laughs> I need to have like my tech. And since, you know, Elon now has like the Starlink Internet, I'd be good there. So I just oh, yeah. have the Starlink Internet and I'd have all my tech all set. <laughs> and then I was going to say like a grill or something so that I could be cooking the food. Oh, my gosh, you guys. Like, I want like my dog, <laughs> my husband. Like, I want people. Oh, sorry, honey. I, I wasn't thinking of, of that. Stuff out. Sorry, honey. We just left. We just left everybody out. <laughs> <laughs> Quite Leave honestly, being on an island else. by myself right now sounds pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, if you want to pay off more debt, save more money, and get better results with your finances in as little as the next 30 to 60 days, all you have to do is head over to debtfreedad.com, click on the green button at the top of the page, and we will show you how you can get started today. And as always, congratulations to all of you guys who are taking a stand for your financial life and are wanting better. Hey, we get that getting out of debt isn't easy, but with our help and with your consistency and discipline, we promise you guys this will be some of the best work that you guys do in your entire lives. Thanks for being a part of today's show, and we will see you guys on next week's episode.